So each of the problems between 13 and 16 can be done on our calculator. They also can be done by hand. Let me do them on my calculator first and then match them up by hand. 13 wants me to do 2a minus 3f. Matrix A has three rows and two columns, so it's a three by two matrix. In order to do 13, I need to enter matrix A and matrix F, which are both three by two matrices. Let me just get these matrices in real quickly to do 13. So I'm gonna go second matrix, edit. Easy enough to do matrix A, so I'm gonna leave the calculator on A, type three by two, and then just type the numbers one, zero, three, two, six, and one. Double check that you're right. I think I'm good here. Quit out of this. Then second matrix over to edit. Arrow down to F, which is another three by two matrix. And I think I already have it in, but let me enter it again. One, negative two, five, two, six, and seven. I have that in just fine. Second quit. Now to do problem 13, I need two and then second matrix names A, there's the 2A, minus three, second matrix names F, there's my minus three F. The answer is going to be negative one, six, negative nine, negative two, negative six, negative 19. To do this by hand, I need to find out what 2A is and to find out what 2a is, I'm going to take each one of these numbers and multiply it by 2. So 2 times 1 is going to be 2. 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. 2 times 2, it's going to be 4. 2 times 6 is going to be 12. And 2 times 1 is going to be 2. I'm going to leave the minus sign, and next to it I'm going to write what matrix 3f is. So I'm going to multiply everything in matrix f by 3. I'm going to go 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18. And 3 times 7 is 21. So now I have 2a minus 3f. And let me just do that subtraction. I'm going to go 2 minus 3 which is going to give me that negative 1, and then 0 minus negative 6. That double negative is going to give me the positive 6, and then 6 minus 15. 6 minus 15 will give me the negative 9, and then 4 minus 6, which will give me the negative 2, and then 12 minus 18 will give me that negative 6, and then lastly, 2 minus 21 will give me that negative 19. So I found 2a, I found 3f, now I'm subtracting them by subtracting the things in the, the same position. So I subtract that 2 and that 3. I subtracted this 0 and that minus 6, and this left them in the same position. So the 2 times 2 minus 3 was in the upper left, it stayed in the upper left. The th 0 minus negative 6 was in the upper right, it stayed in the upper right. And this matrix reduces to the answer that my calculator gave me. Let me do E minus C on my calculator. C is a 3 by 3 matrix, and E is a 3 by 3 matrix. Let me do them by hand first, and then I'll do them on my calculator. So to do E minus C, I need to write matrix E down, which is 2, 3, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 6, negative 5 follow it by a minus sign, and then put matrix C, which is 1, 0, negative 1, 7, 2, 4, 2, 3, negative 5. This might take more room than I have, so I'm going to write it under, under. The first subtraction I need to do is 2 minus 1. And in my answer, that's going to give me a 1. The second subtraction I need to do is that 3 minus the 0, because they're in the same spot. 3 minus 0 is 3. The third subtraction, upper right, 0 minus a negative 1. That double negative goes positive. You get 0 plus 1 is 1. Move down to the second row. 4 minus 7 is going to give me a negative 3. And then 1 minus 2 is going to give me a negative 1. 
and then 4 minus 4 is going to give me a 0. Move down to the bottom row, first position, 2 minus 2 is going to give me a 0, and then 6 minus 3 is going to give me a 3, and then negative 5 minus a negative 5, the double negative goes plus, you get negative 5 plus 5, which is 0. I claim that this is the answer to E minus C. Do it on my calculator real quickly, which means I need to enter a matrix E and a matrix C. So first I'm going to do matrix C on my calculator by going second matrix, edit, arrowing down to C, typing 3 by 3, then 1, 0, negative 1, 7, 2, 4, 2, 3, negative 5. Double check that I have it right which I do, so then second quit, and then enter matrix E, so second matrix, edit, go down to E. I think I've already entered it. There's a three by three matrix. I have two, three, zero, four, one, four, two, six, and negative five. So I have both the matrices entered. Second quit. On the main screen, I just needed to say E minus C. So I'm gonna go second matrix, under names, tag E, and hit enter and then minus second matrix under names get C. So there's the E minus C that the problem gave me and I hope that's the answer. So 1, 3, 1, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 0, 3, 0. Feel perfectly good about my work. Move on to the multiplication, which is much stranger. So for problem 15, I want to do A times E. And to do A times E, I'm going to write matrix A first. 1, 0, 3, 2, 6, 1. Matrix E second, which is 2, 3, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 6, negative 5. Now I want to take this first row and write it as a column and pair it up with everything in the columns of, of E. So I'm going to go 1, 0 times 2, 4, 2 and 1, 0 times 3, 1, 6, and 1, 0 times 0, 4, 5. Because I have these straggling numbers, it's impossible to multiply. So this is not possible. Not all matrices can be multiplied together. And this is a set that can't be multiplied together. Let me tell my answer to 15 is going to be not possible. When I go to do this on my calculator, it's going to give me some sort of dimension mismatch error. Since I've already entered matrix A and E, I don't need to re-enter them. To do A times E on my calculator, I go second matrix names A and second matrix names E. That's my calculator's version of A times E. It's going to give me some sort of error message when I hit enter. Dimension mismatch for my answer, we're going to say it's not possible. Move on to do A times B, which I should probably do on another sheet of paper. I don't think I can fit it. So number 16 wants me to do A times B. Matrix A is 1, 0, 3, 2, 6, 1. And matrix B is 4, 5, 1, 2. This one is going to be possible. It's kind of long. First thing I'm going to do is get the top row of my answer. Using the top row of A, writing the 1, 0 as a column next to the first column in B, which is 4 and 1. And then I'm going to do the same with that 1, 0 next to the 5 and 2. I'm going to multiply across. 1 times 4 is 4. 0 times 1 is 0. And then add down. Multiply across. 1 times 5 is 5. 0 times 2 is 0. Add down. The top row of my answer is going to have a 4 and a 0. I'm going to move on to the middle row of my answer using the middle row of A. So I'm going to take the 3, 2, that's the middle row, and write it as a column. Write it next to the 4, 1 column. And write it next to the 5, 2 column. I'm going to multiply across. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 1 is 2. Add down and get 14. Multiply across. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 2 is 4 add down and get 19. My middle row is going to be 14 and 19. I've used the top row to get the top row, the middle row to get the middle row, 
Now I'm going to use the bottom row of A to get the bottom row. I'm going to take this 6 1, write it vertically next to the column 4 1 and next to the column 5 2. 6 times 4 is 24, 1 times 1 is 1, add and get 25. 6 times 5 is 30, 1 times 2 is 2, add and get 32. In my answer, the bottom row is going to be 25 and 32. This should be the answer to number 16. I've already entered matrix A to get this checked on my calculator. I should also enter matrix B, which is a two by two matrix. So I'm going to enter matrix B by going second matrix, going over to edit, down to B, typing two by two, and going four, five, one, and two. So I have B in properly and A in properly. To do A times B, I do second matrix A under names, second matrix B under names. There's A times B. Hopefully I see exactly that. I see 4, 5, 14, 19, 25, 32. The mistake is staring at me right here. I said 5 plus 0 equal to 0. 5 plus 0 doesn't equal to 0. 5 plus 0 equals to 5. So my answer was partially right, but I made a silly mistake. This is why I check all these on my calculator. It's easy to check on my calculator. Keeps you from writing down silly mistakes. So I fixed my answer. It's 4, 5, 14, 19, 25, 32. Seven. So I started doing 17. And for these systems of nonlinear equations, when one of the variables has an exponent, you can't use the elimination method. There's two things that make sense if I'm using the substitution method. Solving the top equation for x and substituting into the bottom equation, or solving the bottom equation for y and substituting in the top equation. Usually on the test, I tell you which is better. I started off solving the top equation for x and decided to solve and substitute it into the bottom equation. And I got down to this step and I, I just didn't want to deal with that. Do with that. I, the math got really ugly. Since the math got so ugly, solving the top equation for x, I said, I'm just going to shoot the video over and solve the bottom for y. So my first step, so solving the top for x was a disaster. Let me try to solve the bottom for y. Because those are the two letters that are easy to solve for. x in the top equation is easy to solve for. y in the bottom equation is easy to solve for. I hope this makes a better go. So this bottom equation to solve for y, I would just minus x squared from both sides. I'll get y equals minus x squared plus 10. Or 10 minus x squared if I care to. Now I'm going to substitute that into the top equation. So into the top equation, now I'm going to substitute in for that y, negative x squared plus 10. And I'm going to get x plus 2 times, I'm going to emphasize it's negative 1x squared plus 10 equals to 5. I'm going to clear the parentheses. Go 2 times negative 1x squared is minus 2x squared. 2 times 10 is 20. This is turning out not to be that much better. I want to get this set equal to 0, and I like to have a positive squared term. So I'm going to minus x plus 2x squared and minus 20 from both sides. The reason I'm doing this is there's a square in the problem, so I need to get it set equal to 0. And if the x squared term has a negative in front of it, it messes me up. So minusing x, adding 2x squared, and minusing 20 is going to cancel out the entire left side. On the right-hand side, the only thing that's going to combine are the 5 and the minus 20, which is going to be minus 15. And I'm going to write that last after the 2x squared minus x. This is better than what I had when I did it the other way, but not so great. I still need to use bottoms up factoring to get this solved. So I'm going to solve for x. And I'm going to do bottoms up factoring for this 2x squared minus x minus 15. The steps in bottom up factoring is going to be to multiply by 2 and rewrite. This is going to give me x squared minus x minus 30. 
then I'm going to factor. That factors into x plus 5 times x minus 6. And then I'm going to divide by 2, reduce, and bottoms up. So divide by 2, divide by 2. First fraction doesn't reduce, so I bottoms up and get 2x plus 5. Second fraction reduced, and I get an x minus 3. So this is my side work. I can go back into my work now and get 0 equals to 2x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now I'm going to set the 2x plus 5 equal to 0 and the x minus 3 equal to 0. For the 2x plus 5, I minus 5 from both sides and get 2x equals to minus 5 and then divide by 2, divide by 2 and get x equals to negative 5 halves. For the x minus 3, I add 3 to both sides and get x equal to 3. Now I need for each x to get a y. I probably would be nicer if, if I would have written this y equals 10 minus x squared. Just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to do that. And for each one of these x's, I'm going to get a y. The first y, I'm going to do y equals 10 minus negative 5 halves squared. I'm going to do that on my calculator. So I'm going to go 10 minus parentheses negative 5 divided by 2 squared and then math enter enter and get y equals to 15 over 4. On the other side I'm going to get y equals 10 minus 3 squared. That's just going to be 10 minus 9 so y is going to be 1. When I go to write my answer, it's super important to pair each x with the corresponding y. So negative 5 halves and 15 fourths need to be put together, and 3 and 1 need to be put together. I'm going to write my answer on another sheet of paper, and I'm actually going to take the time to check. So for my answer, I need to pair the pair. So x equal to negative 5 halves pairs with y equal to 15 fourths and x equal to 3 pairs with y equal to 1. I need to go back to the original problem before I did any substituting and check. The first equation is x plus 2y equal to 5. The second equation is x squared plus y equals to 10. I'm going to check both of these the best I can. For the first one, I'm going to go is negative 5 halves plus 2 times 15 over 4 equal to 5, all on my calculator. So negative 5 divided by 2 plus 2 times 15 divided by 4 should equal to 5, which it does. And for the second one, I should do negative 5 half squared plus 15 over 4 and that should equal to 10. So let me check that real quickly. Parentheses, negative 5 halves squared plus 15 divided by 4. Oh, I need to get an idiot error. Negative 5, I forgot the divide there. Negative 5 halves squared plus 15 over 4, and it gives me 10. So the first ugly equation works. For the second one, I'm going to check by going 3 plus 2 times 1 and see if that equals to 5. This gives me 3 plus 2 equal to 5, which is 5 equal to 5. And for the bottom one, I'm going to do 3 squared plus 1 equal to 10. That's going to give me 9 plus 1 equal to 10 and 10 equal to 10. So I've double checked so I feel good about my work. Two more problems left on the review to deal with. This is our answer to problem 17. And I think I don't even know where I wrote that was the answer. So the answer to problem 17 come in pairs. It's x equal negative 5 halves, y equal to 15 over 4, and x equal to 3, y equal to 1. And you have to pair the x with its proper y. A lot of students will just write all four numbers down, not paired, and I have to take points off. AT 
18 wants me to sketch a graph of systems of equations, which means graphing and shading, graphing and shading. And I kind of like graph paper to do that. And hey, I'm fresh out of graph paper, which is too bad. So I'm going to just sketch it on the, on the fly and, and just make it work. So the first thing I'm going to graph is x is greater than or equal to 0. And that's just the y-axis. And I'm going to shade right. I'm going to do that in blue. So let me do um, a nice pink graph to start. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. For x greater than or equal to 0, it's a solid line that goes right on the y-axis. And I'm supposed to shade to the right. Next, I'm going to do y is greater than or equal to 0, which is the x-axis and I shade up. So solid line through the x-axis for the y greater or equal to 0, shade up, shade up. These shadings only overlap in the first quadrant, which is going to be where my final shading is all going to overlap. Now I need some new colors. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but for my x plus y is less than or equal to 6, I'm going to find the intercepts for x plus y equal to 6. So I'm going to let x be 0 and get 0 plus y equal to 6. That will give me y equal to 6. That's going to give me the point 0, 6. Now because I can't make equally spaced numbers on the axes, my intersection points are going to be hard to find. Next thing I'm going to do is plug 0 in for y and get x plus 0 equal to 6. That gives me x, equal, x equals to 6. That's going to be the point 6, 0. I connect those two points with a line and I have to figure out which way to shade. So for shading, I'm going to try two points on the x-axis. I'm going to try 5, 0 and 7, 0. So for this one, my shading, I'm going to try the point 5, 0. Plug in to this equation, 5 for x and 0 for y. This gives me 5 is less than or equal to 6, and that's true. And then I'm going to do 7, 0, and do 7 for x and 0 for y, and get 7 is less than or equal to 6, which is false. So this is the true side. This line needs to shade this way. I'm going to keep my shading in the first quadrant because of where the bottom two shadings overlap. The last one I need to worry about, I kind of have to pull out another sheet of paper for the 2x plus y is less than or equal to 10. I'm going to start off with 2x plus y equal to 10. I'm going to plug in 0 for x and go 2 times 0 plus y equals to 10. That's going to give me y equal to 10. That'll correspond to the point 0, 10. And then I'm going to plug in 0 for y and get 2x plus 0 equals to 10. That will give me 2x equal to 10. When I divide by 2, I'm going to get x equal to 5. That's going to give me the point 5, 0. So now I need to plot 0, 10, and 5, 0. 5, 0 I can do. 0, 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10 is up there somewhere. I'm going to connect these two points, solid line because of the or equal to, and now I'm going to figure out where to shade by plugging in 4, 0, and 6, 0 into the original problem. So for the 4, 0, I'm going to go 2 times 4 plus 0 is less than or equal to 10. That gives me 8 is less than or equal to 10, which is true. That's the 4, 0. And then for the 6, 0, I go 2 times 6 plus 0 is less than or equal to 10. That gives me 12 is less than or equal to 10, which is false. So I need to shade 
towards the 4 on the x-axis or towards the 4, 0. So this one needs to shade this way. All my shading has to stay in the first quadrant because of the first two equations intersect in the first quadrant. So what I'm going to do is darken up the shading in the first quadrant that's beneath all the lines. So I'm going to stay in the first quadrant. I'm going to stay underneath the peach line. And then where they intersect, I'm going to stay underneath the pink line. And my shading is not going to bump up to the pink line when the pink line's the high line. It's not going to bump up to the peach line when the peach line is the high line. So now I'm going to label my corner points in this shaded region. That's the point 0, 06. That's considered a corner point. The origin is the point 0, 00. That's considered a corner point. That intercept right there is the point 5, 0. That's considered a corner point. I don't need to label 0, 010. I don't need to label 6, 0. I do need to label that point. I really can't tell what it is. I'm going to enter this as a 2 by 3 system of equations and do RREFA to figure out what that point's supposed to be. So real quickly, second matrix edit. Do a three, 2 by 3 system of equations. 1, 1, and 6 for that one, and 2, 1, and 10 for this one. I'm pretending they have equal signs. Second quit, second matrix math, RREF, second matrix names, enter, and this is the point 4, 2. That's every everything that needs to be done for problem 18. I've graphed all four inequalities, and I've darkened the best I could where all the shadings converge. Apparently, that's problem 18. This is problem 20. I don't see a problem 19, so I'm assuming there's no problem 19, or it just didn't print out, which would be strange. Um, but for now, I'm going to say there's no problem 20. If I find one, I'll, I'll dig it out and do it. So, first shading. X is greater than or equal to 0 is the y-axis, and I shade to the right. Solid line because you are equal to. So technically, I would shade that all to the right. The next easy shading, y is greater than or equal to 0. That's the x-axis, solid line, and I shade up. Those two shadings, they overlap in the first quadrant, so I don't need to shade in any of the quadrants but the first quadrant. Now for the x plus y is less than or equal to 8. I'll work with x plus y equal to 8. Plug in 0 for x and get 0 plus y equals to 8. That gives me y equal to 8. That's going to correspond to the point 0, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the point 0, 8, which has an 8 on the y-axis. Then I'm going to plug in 0 for y. Get x plus 0 equals to 8. That's going to give me x equal to 8. That's going to correspond to the point 8, 0, because I plugged in 0 for y and got 8 for x. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Connect those two points and figure out if I'm shading up or down. Usually less thans are downs, greater thans are up. So I think I'm going to shade towards the origin. To make sure, I'm going to plug 7 and 9 in for x. So I'm going to go is 7 plus 0 for y less than or equal to 8. Technically, I'm plugging the point 7, 0 in. That's going to give me 7 is less than or equal to 8, which is true. For this point, I'm going to plug in 9 for x and 0 for y, because that's the point 9, 0, and see if 9 plus 0 is less than or equal to 8. That gives me 9 is less than or equal to 8, which is false. So I need to shade towards the um, 7, which is towards the origin. So I'm going to shade in this little triangular region. I'm mean, not going to let my shading bounce out of the first quadrant because of the first two inequalities that I graphed. The last one, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. I'm going to work on x plus 2y equal to 10. I'm going to plug 0 in for y and get x plus 2 times 0 equal to 10. That gives me x equal to 10. That's going to correspond to the point 10, 0, because I plugged in 0 for y and got 10 for x. And on my x-axis, there's the point 10, 0. And then I'm going to plug in 0 for x and go 0 plus 2y equal to 10. That gives me 2y equals to 10. That gives me y equal to 5. 
I plugged in 0 for x and got 5 for y. That corresponds to the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 5. And now I'm going to connect those points best I can anyways, which is really not so great. Solid line because of the or equal to. Now I'm going to check. I'm going to plug in 9 and I'm going to plug in 11. Actually, I'm going to plug in 9, 0 and 11, 0 and figure out which one is true. So plugging 9, 0 in, 9 for x and 0 for y, I get 9 plus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 10. That gives me 9 is less than or equal to 10, which is true. And then 11 and 0, I'd go 11 plus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 10. That gives me 11 is less than or equal to 10, which is false. So my shading for this red line also needs to go towards the origin. Technically, I'm shading all down. I'm going to keep my shading in the first quadrant now and try to graph this out. So I need to be to the right of the y-axis, above the x-axis, under the red line, and under the blue line. So I'm staying under the blue line, but when the red line is lower, I stay under the red line too. Under the blue line, when the red line is higher, I stay under the blue line. There's my graph. I'm going to label my corner points. This corner point is the point 0, 5. That corner point is the point 0, 0. This corner point is the point 8, 0. And that corner point looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It looks like 6, 2. I'd roll the dice if, if I was confident in my graphing, but I'm not. I'm going to enter this as a 2 by 3 system of equations and make sure that that's actually 6, 2 by going second, matrix, edit, entering a 2 by 3 system with 1, 1, and 8, and 1, 2, and 10, pretending this said x plus y equal to 8 and x plus 2y equals to 10. Matrices don't work when really when you have less sense, but they still find the point of intersection. So second quit, second matrix math, RREF, second matrix names, enter, and I did get 6, 2. So that's a perfect answer for problem 20. I don't believe there's a problem 19. If I find one, I'll shoot it out record the video and, and put it right after this.